Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode uh, 225, if you're looking at the last thumbnail of the uh, Spearhead Sundays podcast. What are we actually up to, Keelan? <laughs> 241. 241. So just keep that in mind for the next time you make the thumbnail. Uh, welcome to the show. Well, episode, the last episode says 225, apparently, on the thumbnail, seeing a lot of comments about it. And you're, you're just noticing now? Yeah, so I have here in... Uh, well, look, I'm, I'm saying it to you now. I was thinking that we could move all feedback uh, about the show to, like, during the show. Oh, so you're doing... Even though you looked at the thumbnail before I uploaded it. I did look at the thumbnail before I uploaded it, but we know, we, as I've said many times before, if you blame me for something, you are wrong. I would have clicked into it, yeah. Put the ad in. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, look, all right. But you know, the minute that you send me a video to review, I turn into Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Without the, any piano skills, I just turn into a, into a blind black guy, um, which, which is, you know, it explains all of the language. So uh, welcome to the episode. I wanted to cover that off. That's good. Another thing I wanted to cover off is I have here in my notes... Uh, I needed to clarify that, uh, the, and say that Keelan has not been fired yet. Uh, he's not been fired just yet. Uh, it's on the cards, as <laughs> as discussed. Uh, there's been look. There's been a lot of conjecture, a lot of rumor flying around the internet. Uh, a lot of people have been messaging me. Why are you firing Keelan? What did he do wrong? Why aren't you working with Keelan anymore? What did he? I love. I really like that. Like, like I put up an advertisement saying that I'm hiring someone, a new content lead, and every single person immediately goes, why did you fire Keelan? Not a single person said, oh, why did Keelan decide to move on? No one ever assumed that it would have been Keelan's choice to stop working with me. They all assumed immediately, oh, obviously, finally, he's been fired. Wow. Yes, I guess, I guess, you know, no one was, no one thought, oh, good. Keelan's got a promotion. What's he doing now? Oh, maybe he's moving on to Luke and Lewis. Everyone's first thought was, oh, he's been fired, obviously. That makes the most sense. That's the only answer that could happen. And to those people, I would say, rude. Keelan does a very adequate job here. <laughs> and <laughs> I think that that's very disrespectful to, to not Keelan, but to me and my decision of who I decide to work with. So I would like an apology uh, from everyone. Uh, Keelan has not been fired. Uh, it's actually a great thing that's happening. Um, Luke and Lewis has grown so much. My personal stuff has grown so much that basically it just made no sense to split Keelan across the two things. It just kind of meant that a lot of stuff on both sides was getting left undone. So, you know, Luke and I talked and I had a big thing, big thing about my stuff and I, I decided that, uh, you know, to just give Keelan the option of, you know, Pick one, whichever one you want, you want to do, go full time there. So Keelan is, uh, unfortunately for me, going full time Luke and Lewis. But uh, what is really great is that means that we'll continue to be working together really, really closely and really frequently just over on Luke and Lewis stuff only. He'll probably change over around, you know, September, October, depends when he's replaced. He's going to be training the new person. And when both of us feel like that person will be ready to take over, you know, they need to have the skills that Keelan has. They need to have, at a, you know, uh, below average spelling they need to be on time they need to be able to take a punch there's a lot of things that 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 are needed for this job that uh you know might might not seem obvious on paper so once once he's trained up once he's you know uh he's he's gotten a bit resilient to all of the verbal abuse that flies around here um we'll 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 go we'll go hands off and and i don't mean literally uh, <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the show, guys. Keelan is here and he won't be leaving. And I don't know if he's going to be leaving the, the Spearhead Sundays podcast. That's yet to be decided as well. Um, dude, I had a great day yesterday where I was supposed to record this episode on Thursday. It's Friday today, as the Patreon supporters will know. Uh, they get everything early. Uh, but uh, normally we, rec we record on Thursdays and put it out then. But Thursday, yesterday for us... The next door had uh, builders in, or at least they thought they were builders, but uh, it turns out they were just guys who love to scream with hammers. Uh, because all day yesterday, I think they were, they, were, they were demolishing like a little bungalow next door, and all I could hear yesterday for an entire hour was, Hoya! 
They would literally make ninja noises while they were destroying the, the, the bungalow they were employed to do. There was about six of them. And, and I thought it was just one of them making noise. But every time I left the studio, it was like all of them. They, they put on Triple M. They were all singing along. None of them were singing in a serious way. It was all in a stupid voice. Uh, as soon as You're the Voice came on, everyone lost their normal voice and started doing the, the dumbest impression they could of the singer in that song. And that was incredible stuff. And it's that's a real Frankston vibe of like, yeah, you can hire tradies, but they're all going to be insane, like 100% of them, you know? I heard one conversation where one of the guys who was the loudest – uh, every time he would swing the hammer, he would scream like he was Thor, uh, who just had you know someone else grip him by the balls. High pitch Thor, I like to call him. Uh, he was screaming every time, and then he goes, "Oi, is the boss coming in?" And they're like, "Yeah." And he goes, "Oh, what?" And they're like, "Oh, what's wrong with the boss?" And he goes, "Oh, he just doesn't like my on-site behavior." <laughs> And then I watch him throw a brick through a window, which is unnecessary, but did look fun. I really wanted to join in. So, you know, Frankston tradies, good on him. Good on him. Uh, another thing that's important to talk about, uh, mostly for the views of this podcast, is Friendly Geordies. Uh, because, the you know, at the moment, Friendly Geordies, you, you even whisper his name. Friendly Geordies. And, and can you hear that, Keelan? That's views. Coming in. 14,000 views on the previous podcast. 17, that keeps going up. 17,000 views on a podcast. I got heaps of views on my main channel mentioning him. I've got uh, 37,000 views on a Luke and Lewis clip, which is absolutely mental. I hope for the, you know, just for the sake of my career that the cunt goes to prison. Because obviously this is great for my career. If I'm actually deciding to to join John Barillaro on this on this issue, hopefully Christo will be locked up and they'll go after Friendly Geordies next because that'll be another 18 months of, of really good keyword content where the only person who can capitalize on the Friendly Geordies algorithm is everyone that is not Friendly Geordies. Have you seen YouTube recently? It's just Friendly Geordies video. If you made a video about anything other than Friendly Geordies, you are an idiot or you are Friendly Geordies himself. How great is that? You know, what a little gap in the market. I never thought that I would be I would be the one to serve all those ravenous Friendly Geordies fans content about Friendly Geordies because he hasn't not uploaded for a week since he started. So all those people need somewhere to go. And welcome to the show. Um, it is my mission to actually get you to uh, to move your super fund back to a super fund that actually destroys the planet. That's my goal. I've actually partnered with uh, with BP, and uh, and I'm really pro fracking. Welcome to the show. Um, no, an update on, on 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 a serious note. An update on the story. Christo's gag order has been lifted, which is fucking great. Um, a bunch of politicians are speaking publicly in Parliament about this and calling this behaviour out. I did say. Uh, during my episode that no politician was doing that. I will clarify that was true as of recording. No politician had spoken about it. But uh, after the episode, well, before the episode was released and then since, heaps of politicians have, have done it. Julian Hill, who I who I quite like, uh, has been posting heaps of stuff about it. I know Helen Dalton has been yelling about it, but she's from the, the, the fucking fishing shooting party. So... You know, she could tell us that that uh, that that gravity was real and and wouldn't really affect anything. You know, a lot of people go, "Well, I'm not listening to you. You're from the fishing party." You know, talk about fish. Why don't you? Um, so, <laughs> so uh, I think I think it's that's good, and it seems like Christo has a great case. The gag order was lifted, so we can now talk about John Barillaro. I believe uh, he's talking outside of court. The lawyers are pretty seem pretty happy. Um, and I and I heard that the, that it, that his dog has started learning boxing, um, just in case the cops come back. So he'll be ready. Um, so that's that's great. And I I hope that uh, I hope that he gets trashed in court. I really do. I hope John fucking loses because I think that that was a real. I, I I at least hope that that was John's. Oh fuck! Maybe I can't do anything I want. You know, because it seems like up to this point, he's been able to do whatever the fuck he wants, no repercussions. He could help out his friends. He could do whatever he wanted, allegedly. Uh, but then he decided to call in that favor. And it seems like even, for the most part, even people who hate Friendly Geordies are going, yeah, I hate the guy, but it, this is fucked. You know, when a pedestrian journalist is standing up for Friendly Geordies and joining forces with me, 
there's a problem. You've done something objectively wrong. So that's great. I think that's really good. Um, and uh, and hopefully I can continue to capitalize uh, off, off, uh, off of all of this because really the, the real person who benefits here is me. Um, no, I was... I was texting Jordan the other day, and and he was he was thankful and and uh, and for it. So they're they're doing good, uh, which is great. Um, and I wouldn't be joking about it if I felt like they couldn't fucking handle it. So yeah, uh, that's really great. Um, what else has been happening recently? Oh, my tour is is probably going to go on sale next week. My tour is going to go on sale next week uh, for everyone outside of Melbourne. Make sure you check uh, all my websites and my mailing list, loosebeers.com slash gig list. That's going to be going on sale very soon. Uh, it's all finally, finally locked in just in time for the entire country to be locked down by COVID because uh, the people who run Sydney are great at, uh, at, at doing shit in a pandemic. Dude, I love uh, how... Uh, what's her name? The chick who looks like a koala, but also kills them. Gladys Berejiklian. Gladys Berejiklian. I love her. I love every liberal in Sydney because they have spent like 18 months just trashing Melbourne and trashing any state that goes into lockdown. Perth is Labour, isn't it? Is that right? No, he's liberal. He's liberal. Oh my God. Mark McGowan. Get out of me state. Is he a liberal? I thought he was Labour. This is really ruining the rant that I was just about to do, man. Come on. Come on, Greens. Let's go. At least be in the Shooters and Fishers. Sex party. Let's go. Sex party? Oh, he's Labour. Sorry. Yes! I fucking knew it. So every Labour politician has been going into lockdown when they should, right? And every Liberal has been going, oh, they're dictators. They're locking it all down. It's not, it's not anything to worry about. And then I love, I fucking love this. They've been trashing lockdowns for so long that now when Sydney has to go into a lockdown, even the news that has been trashing every Labour politician for doing this uh, and, and all of the politicians who've been so anti-lockdown, now that they know that they have to do it and they are doing it, they're going, well, well it's not a lockdown. It's just, what are they calling it? Some made up bullshit turn. Stay in place laws. It's not a lockdown. It's just you can't leave your house unless it's for essential activities. You can't go to work. Uh, you can't do anything other than what you would be able to do in a lockdown situation. However, it's not a lockdown. You're just not allowed to leave your house and you're, 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 you're locked. You're down. But... It's not a lockdown. It's a stay in place order. It's hilarious because the media now have to spin a bunch of pro fucking lockdown headlines. Can you pull up a Sydney Morning Herald headline about the this stay in place order? I bet it fucking rocks. Just anything. I want to know what they what the news is calling it because they're they're in partnerships with the liberals. Like they were they were called they were calling him dictator Dan. All this kind of stuff. And lockdown sucks. I'm not like, I'm not happy there's a lockdown. That's obviously terrible if you're a Sydney person. But I, I, I love how fucking biased the news is. Okay, so I'm just looking through the random ones. Yeah. Sydney restrictions. Sydney restrictions? Sydney restrictions for Sydney. Um, <laughs> yep. And then just like very, uh, very weak words on it. And then for, for Victoria. For Victoria? Lockdown again. Victoria locked it, locks down when Australia opens. What yeah. are the reasons? Victoria locks down when Australia opens. Sydney is experiencing a period of restrictions. And uh, and the, the headline will be like, oh, Gladys is doing a great job. She's so brave. And it's, look, I don't know. Lockdown sucks, so I'm not happy that it's happening. But it is hilarious seeing the double standards of, like, the news and, and how like buddy buddy they are with the party that they like you know it's fucking hilarious and it's so transparent especially with the internet because i guess if you lived there and the only thing you had was newspapers you would just have no reference you'd have no idea that they treat one party like this and another party like that for the same fucking issue uh it's yeah i don't know it's just really funny i think it's absolutely hilarious how the, the double standards of it so you know good on good on him Good on you guys. I hope I do hope that they get over it because my tour is going to kick off in August, so the whole country has July. This is what I, this is what I was worried about. I knew Melbourne would beat it, 
But it seems to be like by the time this one, the state with the problem beats it, they give it to somebody else. So Adelaide gave it to us, I think, and then I, I imagine we've given it to Sydney. I don't know for sure though. Uh, and then I, Sydney will beat it by the time my shows happen. But is it then going to be in fucking Brisbane? It's such a scary time. I haven't seen Luke for over a month now. It's been over a month he's been stuck in Gold Coast. He thought that he was going to be there for three more weeks. Now the rules have changed again. It's fucking impossible to keep track of all of the rules. And it's all because AstraZeneca's awesome. Did you see uh, they, they, they're now cancelling AstraZeneca entirely? They're just going to phase it out. They're like, yeah, all right, maybe too many people are dying taking this shit. Hilarious. Whereas, like, even America, the place that, that everyone in the world, even the third world countries were like, what the fuck are they doing, are now at the forefront of it. How American is that? That truly is American culture is, ah, fuck it. We'll throw money at the problem. That'll fix it. And we'll, we'll deal with the consequences later. And that's what they did. And it's absolutely working. I mean, many people died and we'll never see them again. But right now they're looking pretty good in terms of vaccines. Um, I've heard actually, uh, now that most of the, the, I read this interesting article, a lot of the schooling systems in America, most of their high school students have been vaccinated now. In the states where, uh, um, in the, the American states where all of their high school students are vaccinated, they're actually performing better for the first time in history uh, than China in math. Really, really interesting statistic. All of the vaccinated students are, have actually become better than at math than most of the Chinese students. And that's really never happened in history before. I wonder why that is. Uh, I, have, I have also uh, noticed that um, so, like Minecraft usage is up heaps. Like uh, in demographics that you wouldn't normally think that Minecraft would be used. Uh, it's just rocketing up heaps. And this could be dream. Could be dream, but the evidence is pointing towards vaccines, a bit of a side effect we didn't know about. Interesting stuff, something to think about. Uh, <laughs> um, what else What else do we have here? What have I done? Watch the Boris Johnson clip. Oh, Boris, is he talking about vaccines? No, he's not. He's, he's talking about contact, con contact tracing. tracing. Contact tracing, all right. So this is the video you airdropped to me. All right, let me pull it up. Okay, well, that's that really gives me faith, guys. Is uh, you know a little behind the scenes there. If this isn't funny, we can cut it out. We're leaving it in now. I don't, I don't like editing this show. I like it just going up raw, semi unplanned. Sometimes an episode will stink. Sometimes last week, all the comments were like, "Man, this is like a stand up show," and I'm like, "Fuck, was it? That episode rocked. This one is not going to be there." But you know, let's see. With contract taste, contact tasting, testing. Tracing, forgive me, contract, contract, contact tracing. <laughs> what? Dude, that, that guy went full Joe Biden. Contract taste, contact tasting, contact testing, tracing, forgive me, contact, contract, contact tracing. Uh, through NHS, test and trace. That is so good. I love Boris Johnson. I love him. He's really like a less, he seems like a real... He said all of the things that, that made people like Trump, like personally, forget about policies. Boris has all of those things, but doesn't have all of the things that made people hate Trump. You know, he just has like the bumbling, goofy, kind of funny personality, the strange haircut. The He has it all, but without all of the, hey, should we maybe like overthrow an election? Yeah, nah, you guys do it. I'm not, I, nah, I was joking. I was joking. Those guys took it seriously. I was joking. I love Boris. Good on him. You know, fucking I Am Alex has COVID. Dude, there'd be a few people on Twitter cheering about that. He texted me the other day. Uh, it, you know, like I've, Australia has had such little COVID that I, I've kind of forgotten that it's even a thing that you can get. And then I just have friends text me going, oh, I've got COVID. I'm like, oh, what's that like? And it, apparently it's just death. Like he's just so fucked. He's coughing. He's really tired. He feels like he feels like shit. He's got a terrible headache. Really, really awful stuff. I think it's made him more gay as well. Looking, judging by his TikTok, I think it's made him considerably more gay. Good on him. He's having a crack. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, I, I hope he'll be all right. 
But that might be that might you know that might be a side effect of COVID. The vaccine apparently gives you autism, and and maybe COVID itself just makes you really gay. Um, so good on good on Alex. Um, hope he pulls through. That sucks, man. Apparently he was just just. I mean that that really is like really points out how fucking lucky Australia is, where England is out there they're killing it with vaccinations. A lot of the population is vaccinated, but. You know, he can just go out following the rules with a bunch of friends and half of them get COVID. Uh, Whereas, you know, when Australia, even when Australia has like none, no one's fucking vaccinated, uh, but you can walk around doing whatever you want and there's almost no chance of you getting COVID. Whereas in any other country in the world, that's not the case. Even the ones where they are super vaccinated. So, you know, you, we can complain a lot and I think that we should, otherwise nothing would get done. But you also got to appreciate how fucking lucky we are because that shit's, you know, you don't want to get it. I spoke to him and it's like, man, it seems very, very awful. And he's like a young, healthy man. Because, um, you know, I like, I, I like jazz. I don't want to get rid of her, you know? <laughs> Because because it makes you gay, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, you know, I like you know. I mean, that's a hassle. I'm gonna have to find some some other dude who, who wants to pay the rent, help me ship out posters and stuff. That's, <laughs> you know, that would be annoying. <laughs> Loosebiz.com, get your merch. <laughs> um, Bitcoin is rotting. Bitcoin is absolutely dying. It's it's absolutely rotting, and I think it's I think it's really funny, uh, and I'm all for it. And I hope that it continues to plummet. China just banned Bitcoin mining. Gamers rejoice. All those uh, graphics cards will now be slightly more available. Maybe they'll be fifty dollars less expensive. Uh, and uh, yeah, all all the crypto is crashing. I think that uh, that now that I have have sold all of my crypto before this big dump, I'm I'm pro. I'm anti crypto. I hope that it rots. I hope that it dies. But you better believe, guys. The minute I put two dollars in, I will be like, man, it is the future of currency. And that is that is my. That's how I do. All of my uh, research about stocks, about cryptocurrency, all of my fan- financial due diligence, uh, all the research that I do, uh, generally I'll get the answer I want. Um, so looking at now, you know, when I've got no money in bet invested in crypto, from everything that I'm looking at, it seems like it's going to plummet and I hope that it does. But, you know, in six months when I've got some tour money to put back into it, it's actually looking like it's going to go up then. So, you know, I'm not a financial expert, but I do recommend you follow my advice because if you do, the market will do what I want it to do. Um, and that's how you really become a financial guru. That's really how you advise people is after you've bought, you tell people to buy. And then after you've sold, you tell them to sell. And then you just really hope that the market does whatever you want it to do. That's how investing works. Don't listen to these people with their chart analysis and their their due diligence and their research. What really happens is whatever you want to happen. Uh, because reality is a construct and and numbers aren't real. So if you, man, if you think Bitcoin's worth $100,000, it's worth that much to you. Why not to everyone else? I personally think it's worth ten dollars. So if anyone's selling their selling their Bitcoin for ten bucks, I will buy it. So thank you very much, guys. That's how financial works. The finance system works. It doesn't. Speaking, dude. Speaking of finance, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com, the best ball bag trimmer in the game. Keelan, how are you pubes at the moment? Out of control because he hasn't been using the lawnmower 3.0. You know, you know they've they've recently brought in the lawnmower 4.0. I've I don't have that model. I've heard it actually sucks your dick while trimming. Now I, that's unconfirmed. That's all conjecture and rumor. So I don't know if that's true, but I have heard it. I heard it from me after I said it from when it came out of my mouth. I heard it, but I but so I wouldn't exactly count on it giving you a blowjob. But it looks like it it would be nice if that happened. Uh, Manscape.com use code Spears for twenty percent off and free shipping. The the lawnmower three point seriously the best ball bag pussy hair trimmer in the game. I shave my nipples with this thing. That's how lovely it is. And you know what? They're looking great. Then, then I think that I have quite 
quite nicely shaped nipples. It's not a Logan Paul situation. They're, they're a little bit too big. They're not too small. They're just right. However, they, they do get a bit of a wizard's beard happening. And Manscaped cleans that shit up. Get out of here, Gandalf. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS. 20% off and free shipping. Get on it. Um, moving on. Uh, I loved... This might be a controversial opinion. I love what Ethan Klein did to Steven Crowder. I think it's fucking hilarious, and I'm going to tell you why. If you don't know, Steven Crowder, he's like a right-wing content creator. I don't hate I don't hate the guy. I got no issue with what he he makes. He's done some stuff in the past that I thought was funny. He's done a lot of this a lot of stuff that I think is kind of cringe, but Ultimately, he's he's like how I view a lot of the left-wing content creators. Uh, you, you can't go wrong. As long as you just put yourself in a box, you you can kind of do whatever the fuck you want as long as you're not in like as long as you as long as you just stay in the box and you never disagree with your audience. You can just become a millionaire off saying shit that other people have said. You know? Like a lot of criticisms of Jordan Peterson is people going, oh, he's not a fucking genius. He just says what other philosophers say and other doctors say. It's like, yeah, dude, that's how everything works. Scientists aren't fucking the scientists because they invented the science from scratch. They just started building on the groundwork that other cunts did. Your history teacher didn't invent history. He read a book and then told you what was inside the book. That's how human knowledge works works is just one guy gets so far and then another dude takes the rod and keeps running it not human knowledge is just a relay race people know things because other people know things because other people know things so going oh he's not smart he just he just expands on other people's ideas it's like yeah dude that's language that's how we fucking talk how many times have you fucking said something that i said probably heaps and i'm stupid so um, those content, those, those left wing, right wing content creators are funny to me, uh, because it's just like, to me, it seems really fucking easy where, whether you're left or right, all you got to do is just stay consistent and always say the thing that agrees with the box that you put yourself in. So like, oh, I'm a right wing guy. I like guns. I don't like government. I'm a left-wing guy. I don't like guns. I don't like uh, billionaires. And as long as you don't really stray too much and you're consistent and you keep, your content is consistent and you consistently say things that would never piss off your core audience, you could be fine. I mean, the only time you ever see these like content creators ever get owned, even when they ever, even when they get owned, like even when they get do something that's so fucking stupid, or someone else like absolutely demolishes them in a debate, they never lose anything because their audience decided that they think the things they do way before they saw their content. So it's like, yeah, I mean, I like Steven, but. I mainly just agree with what he says. That's the market. So as long as Steven doesn't fucking stray away from the core beliefs, as long as he doesn't come out and go, you know what? I actually want a pussy. That's the only re way that Steven could ever get cancelled by his audience is if he came out and was like, you know, I, I think I want a pussy. While they're doing heart surgery, I'm going to ask them to put some tits in there while they're under the hood, you know? Just save some time. Um... And that's true of left-wing creators also. It's not like... Uh, well, it is a dig at, at, at everyone that does political content. I guess, you know. Not that I don't think anyone should be doing it. It's just, you know, it just it, to me, it just seems like, yeah, do your research, obviously, but as long as you don't stray away from core values of your audience, you can... It's a, it's a lot like religion in that way, you know? Like, pastors can make fucking millions and millions and millions of dollars if they just say what's in the fucking book and don't cheat on their wife... That's all they have to do. And they still cheat on their wife. And sometimes they're fine. Um, so yeah, if you don't know, Stephen Crowder, he's like a right-wing guy. He does, uh, he does a lot of debates. And by debates, I mean he rocks up to universities and has an argument with a guy who hasn't prepared and doesn't really know their shit and then goes, I fucking won. Which is kind of like, it, which is kind of like Mike Tyson going to a preschool, beating the fuck out of a toddler and going, I'm the best boxer in the world. You know? Just trashing people who are unprepared. But basically, Ethan Klein said some shit uh, about uh, the government. Basically, Ethan said, uh, without trying to butcher what he said, he just said, 
yeah, you can you can trust the government. He he was pretty much saying that look, if you're the type of person to just believe everything that you you read on Facebook, you might as well just believe everything that the government says because that's safer for you. That's pretty much what he said, which is like, yeah, look, the government does lie, but if you believe everything that they say, even if you believe a few lies, that's a lot safer than just believing everything that you read on Facebook, which is, I don't entirely agree with that, but it's not like, it's not like uh, the dumbest thing in the world is like, who would you rather have a group of people who believe everything the government says, or a group of people who believe everything they read on Facebook? I would way prefer just to cons- uh, believing what the government says because, yeah, the government lies and you shouldn't just believe everything that they say, but it's way more dangerous to just go, oh, well, everything they say is a lie. You should look at this Facebook group. I reckon they know what's going on. I think that's way more dangerous. Um, but anyway, that's kind of where it started. And uh, it was also over Fauci's emails and all kind of bullshit. I won't go too much into it where it started, but, you know, who cares? It started. Uh, Steven Crowder started calling out Ethan Klein, trying to debate him, which is really funny. That's like me uh, offering, uh, you know, going to Steven Crowder. Hey, man, come and do a stand-up show with me and let's see who's funnier. It's not fair, you know? Like, it's an unfair fight. He's a stand-up comedian. He is not a stand-up comedian. He says he's a stand-up comedian. He's done stand-up a few times, used to do it, and now he's just a political commentator who uh, who who will do a, uh, a mock-up of, of uh, you know, him killing George Floyd and then going, I'm a comedian. You're not, bro. You might do some funny videos every now and then, but a stand-up comedian is a stand-up comedian. If you're not getting on stage uh, fucking five times a week and touring around selling tickets and stuff, you're not a stand-up comedian and it's time to drop that label. Um, so uh, he, he challenges Ethan Klein to a debate and uh, uh, Stephen Crowder, if you don't know, has been consistently dodging this left-wing guy uh, who has been wanting to debate him for a long time. Uh, the quick story is they were booked at the, the same conference one day and uh, to have a debate, Stephen pulled out with little to no notice uh, and then this guy has been trying to debate him ever since and Stephen has been ignoring it or dodging it, which, you know, is his right to do. I don't particularly have an issue with that. I, not really. If you don't want to talk to someone, you don't want to talk to someone. I guess I guess maybe I don't have an issue with that because I'm not uh, one of those guys. I feel like if I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm I'm a I'm a guy who believes in my core values and I'm gonna tell you why I'm right and I'm a debater. I guess you know what? I guess for Stephen, it's a bit of an issue if you're dodging a guy who really wants to debate you. If if debating is your thing, if you always make content of you debating, uh, if you're a debate bro, basically, right? I suppose it is a bit of an issue. But anyway, he uh, goes on to debate Ethan Klein and he makes a big deal out of it. He goes, this is going to be easy for me. He's an easy target. He said specifically, this is going to be a layup. This is going to be easy as fuck, right? So remember this, Steven Crowder is planning on debating a guy that he thinks is an idiot and he knows he will trash and he's been saying this. So a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, I'll, 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 I'll go into that later, right? So anyway, The debate gets set up, Ethan agrees, and then hilariously, I think, Ethan, right at the start of the debate, just goes, I've come prepared, and then just cuts the camera to Sam Cedar, who's the guy that Steven Crowder has been dodging uh, debating for for years. Uh, And then Steven Crowder, just instead of going with the flow and taking it and rolling with it, decides panics basically it's just panic they cut away from the camera he's yelling he he doesn't let anyone else speak him and his sidekick guy are just like talking over each other ethan is just uh trying to make it worse and throwing in jabs sam cedar is there seemingly to have a good faith debate other than showing up and unannounced uh and then they just leave the call and and run away um and i do think that is hilarious because stephen frequently debates people that are unprepared and then trashes them, obviously. Uh, He was planning on debating Ethan, a guy who he thinks and also admits himself is an idiot and doesn't know anything about politics. So he was going in for an easy win to trash this guy. Uh, But then when he was confronted by a guy who knows his shit 
and is ready to debate him and is prepared and might put up at least a fair fight, he runs. So I think that Stephen loses, and a lot of these people trying to frame it that Ethan looked bad in this, I disagree with only because Stephen is a political commentator, right? So to me, if you have a, if you're putting an idea against an idea, it shouldn't matter who is presenting the opposite argument, right? If I think fire is hot and someone goes, oh, well, fire is cold, it doesn't matter who's fucking telling me the opposite. If I believe in my ideas and I've done the research and I know the arguments and I've researched the opposite opinion, so I should know what the other guy is going to say if I've done my research and if I am such an intellectual titan and such a good debater, it shouldn't really matter who the, other per- who the person presenting the ideas is, especially if the guy is not abusive and is there in good faith. And, you know, if, if they're abusive and, and mean and stalking and terrifying and, and whatever, then yeah, fuck that guy. But Sam has not been doing that. He's been, you know, publicly asking for a debate, but to my knowledge, he hasn't been abusive. He hasn't been weird. He hasn't been, you know, aggressive or anything like that. He's just been like, yeah, I want to have a debate. I, I don't know why we missed out on that one last time. Let's fucking do it. So... I think for Steven to run and then claim that he won uh, or came off better than Ethan is kind of funny because Ethan admits that he's an idiot. So you don't really have him there. He goes, oh, I am an idiot and I don't know anything about politics. And also you showed up seemingly or, or with the intention to trash someone who you thought was an idiot who doesn't know anything about politics. So if you showed up to just trash a guy who doesn't know anything you look bad, but then if the guy who doesn't know anything brings someone who knows his shit and you run away, that's just you saying, oh, I I only debate idiots who I know I'm going to have an easy win. So yeah, I guess Ethan lied and that's, I guess, not the best thing in the world. But if if you're just going to go, I I only debate fools who I'm definitely going to trash, you look like an idiot. I'm sorry. That's what you look like. Um... So I do, I, I do think it's funny, but, but ultimately, you know, for Sam Cedar and for Steven Crowder, it doesn't fucking matter who won because at the end of the day, if you just don't change your opinions, you will never lose in the eyes of your audience because it doesn't matter what Sam Cedar says if you're on the right wing and it doesn't matter what fucking Steven Crowder says if you're on the left wing, if one of them or the other one starts saying shit that's undeniably true. It doesn't matter because I'm right wing or I'm left wing. So unless you can completely change an individual's life and move them from one side of the spectrum to the other, debates uh, pointless, I guess. I don't know. Debate shit is always funny to me because I don't, I, I'm not sure if they change anyone's mind. I guess, you know what, it wouldn't change the debater's mind. No one, neither the person, neither person on either side who's doing the actual debate will change their mind, but maybe they do change the mind of people who are listening, I guess, you know, which is maybe why Steven Crowder was running scared because it seems like Sam would soundly trash the guy in a debate, which is why he run, he would run because the last thing you would ever want would be to look like an idiot. And I think he knew that Sam was going to show up. It seems like they had a plan for if Sam showed up because the context of it is they tried to record the week prior. Sam does a regular live show on his YouTube channel, whatever. And uh, they scheduled the call for when Sam would be live. And Sam ended his show. And right when he ended the show, Stephen canceled on Ethan. So instead, they set it up and they pre-recorded Sam's show and they scheduled the interview for when Sam would start his live show. And then Sam sent out the pre-recorded footage as quote unquote live. And then Stephen agreed. And then when he showed up, he uh, the start of the interview, if you watch the clip, Stephen's super nervous. You know when you get scared like... You know, if, if you're walking in the street and then a car blasts their horn and you get like adrenaline, his voice is like shaky and weird and he seems like amped up and hyper aware for like no reason. He just knows something's up and it's just very funny that he truly did seem that scared. So 
Good on Stephen Crowder. Maybe, you know what? Maybe he'll win the next debate against a uh, high school student who has seen one year of the world outside of high school and he's up against a dude who's like 40 who's been doing this his entire life. Maybe he'll win that next one and good luck to him. Um, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to uh, to end the episode there, guys. I reckon that's where we're going to wrap it up. If you... Uh, uh, oh, I need emails. That's why I'm ending this podcast early. If I need life advice emails. I need miscellaneous bit of the uh, end content. So if you need any life advice, if you have a funny story for me, if you have a, a topic you'd like me to talk about or a news thing you'd, like, you'd think that would interest me, send an email to podcast at loosespears.com. I am running low. Um, so uh, I would love to answer your, answer your questions or your emails or anything like that. Podcast at loosespears.com. Uh, and then the podcast will go for an extra 20 minutes you know, next week uh, if I have them. So uh, thank you very much for listening. I'm going to do the uh, Patreon only uh, edition of the uh, the podcast. That's going to be up right now if you're listening to this. So uh, jump on Patreon. That's up right now. Uh, the Sunday supplement will be there if you want more uh, podcast content. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the discord. I'll see you, uh, next Sunday and, uh, yeah. Well, uh, rest in peace to Keelan. Bye. Have a shit one.